Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. Welcome to Barbecue with Franklin. It's also just part of a long chain of history and standard at many barbecue joints. And today on this episode, we're gonna learn how to make it from scratch and look at some of the various ways people are making it here in Central Texas. But first, sausage is one of the world's oldest prepared foods and you can find a variety of sausage in just about every country of the world. In the spirit of giving every country sausage its due, here are as many sausages as I can name in 30 seconds. Square sausage, Salsig Morganug, Chorito, Cervala, Weisswurst, Landjäger, Lieberwurst, Braunschweiger, Wurstel, Siskon, Makara, Midwursti, Schwarzka, Kanska, Kolba, Salami, Luganaga, Mortadella, Krobasa, Sosis, Bu Reverse, Sujuk, Lapcheng, Guntiang, Sai Krakisan, Sunde, Kababoko, Longanita, Bochifara, Morcia, Lenguisa, Chorizo, Processed Meat Stick, Hot Dog, Sausage. See? And that's just a few. Sausage is everywhere, but in Texas, it's really big. So much that we've actually got a city designated the sausage capital of Texas, Elgin, where some places have been making sausage for over 100 years. So in my mind, sausage is center of the plate. A lot of folks sell sausage on the side menu, but here in Elgin we have a saying that, you know, we, we sell sausage and things that go good with sausage. Our business was started in 1882 by a man named William Moon. My family's run the business for the last 46 years and uh, we're actually the third generation of our family to work in the business and run Southside. So the roots of this business, we're simply a small town butcher shop, really, that sold barbecue on the side. But barbecue and sausage has always been about kind of salvaging the cuts of meat that, that nobody wanted to eat, the, not the steaks and, and things like that, but what do you do with all the other pieces? So the barbecue and the sausage is simply a derivative of having fresh meat available, no refrigeration. So either sold it fresh or smoked it and sold it like that. Over time, we've kind of evolved into a barbecue joint that sells fresh meat on the side. We still have a butcher shop, but we really see ourselves as stewards of, of the legacy of this business. It's been around for 132 years, and I'm just the guy trying not to screw it up today. We do have a USDA inspected processing facility here at our restaurant in Elgin. It's on the back side of our restaurant, so we've got about 15,000 square feet under refrigeration where we make all of our sausage and barbecue products. And that inspection gives us the ability to ship it across state lines. Well, you know, I think our sausage is special just because it's simple. It's not over-engineered. When you read our ingredient statement, you can understand exactly what's in the sausage. We use the beef navel, which is right on the, the back end of the brisket. So we've got a lot of the same muscles and a lot of the same fat that you would have in a brisket. And so we just coarse grind that. Just an all beef product. We use natural casing, which is the only pork in the sausage. We've got our all beef original sausage. Here in the last five years, we've introduced a jalapeno cheese sausage as well. We also distribute a Polish sausage, a country style sausage, a garlic sausage. A few years ago, when we turned 125 years old, we came out with a 1882 version of our original sausage that just harkened back to the old days and, and put the heat back into it. So I think barbecue is more than just a food. I think it is a culture. I think it's a way of life. You know, when you think about Texas barbecue, you think simple, you think pure. True, authentic Texas barbecue is, is really just four main ingredients in my opinion. You've got fresh, good quality meat, which is normally beef. You've got a dry rub. You've got post oak wood to make your fire to cook the meat and then it just time you know it's just simple and we try to do it the same way it was done back in 1882 we've just 
quietly sat back over the last 132 years and done what we do and we feel like it's kind of come back around to us and we fit right into the mix with the new barbecue movement. Barbecue is cool now and that's good for everybody. Sausage is one of the few barbecue dishes that it's okay to buy pre-cooked. It can be made on a large scale and still keep with tradition. But there's something special about putting your own twist on sausage. You can still smoke it to give it a little extra flavor. So we're gonna cook some sausage. I prefer an indirect offset cooker, as I do with everything. Um, a lot of people grill this stuff, but I really prefer to be far away from the fire. Now this sausage is pre-cooked, so we're only gonna do it for about 30 minutes until the casings are just right. We're gonna keep it at 275 and real smoky. So when cooking sausage, the most important thing is temperature control. So I'm looking to keep the fire real steady, 275 degrees. You don't wanna to go too hot because you'll pop the casings, and you don't wanna to go too low because you'll end up with chewy casings. So what I've got here, there's a real nice raging hot coal bed at 275 degrees. And then I've got one really dense log sitting on the side just for smoke. So you want a really slow, smoky fire. You're only gonna cook these for about 30 minutes. So it's good to get as much smoke as you can, but not dirty smoke, just good smoke. Dirty smoke is from an incomplete combustion. Maybe the wood's too green, maybe it doesn't have enough air, but it can create creosote and that makes bad barbecue. So if you're seeing that white billowy smoke coming out of the smokestack, make sure your firebox door is open and make sure you've got some nice dry firewood. So we're about 30 minutes in right now. Some of these should be over, some of these should be under, and hopefully one of them is just right. Let's see what we got. So what I'm looking for is these little splotches of fat in there. I want those to start cooking the casing from the inside. There's a really, really small window. You want to get the casing as cooked and crispy as possible from the inside without popping it. This one looks nice on the casing. It's pretty, it's pretty taut. It hasn't really popped yet. This one looks real nice, like the way the fat kind of cooked in there and stuff. So if you look at this one, obviously it went a little bit too far. It's, the casing's kind of shrivelly. It got a little too hot. It popped. It's still delicious, but the casing is gonna be a little bit different. You know, some are better than others, some are perfect, some are far less than perfect, but that's how it goes. Considering the wide world of sausage, it's no surprise that there's more and more places that are willing to try some pretty different stuff with their own sausage. You know, barbecue and sausage is one of those things that, that, that go back from beginning of time. You know, when man discovered fire, that's when man discovered barbecue. It's when they started cooking over an open flame. Survival. You know, you took, took the parts that fell out, you shoved it into a casing and you cooked it up. You took the other parts and you threw it directly on the fire and cooked it up, you know? And that's how it all falls together. At least that's how I look at it. The focus with the menu here at Bangers, you know, is first and foremost to pay tribute to what really is a, a, a beautiful and ancient art form of, of sausage making and charcuterie. And, and to me, that means the way that you do it. We try to do as much as we can by hand. There's nothing mechanized here. It's paying respect to the amount of time that that process is supposed to take, allowing things to cure, allowing things to, you know, flavors and spices to get to know themselves. The meat's got to be a certain temperature. Your fat's got to be a certain amount going into it. It's all got to be kept cold. And then what you're doing is you're creating an emotion in between the meat and the fat, and you're binding those proteins together. And, and you got to use fresh product, man. You can't be using some swag nonsense. It's like, you know, 
People think like, oh, sausage is all the stuff that hits the ground. No, man, sausage is beautiful. Fills the bun, man. No matter what, you always have sausage with the bun. Just a beautiful thing. And uh, we, we cover the uh, classicals, you know, the bratwurst, your bockwurst, you know, your currywurst. We use old school techniques, but throw a new curveball to it and change it up a little bit. We got Texas antelope and venison. We make Korean style sausage. Pretty much if it's got a face, we're gonna grind it up. We're gonna put it in a casing and serve it to you. Some of the wilder stuff's gonna be the vegetarian stuff. I find that to be, you know, just far twisted wild, you know, to, you know, got vegetarian sausage, you know, sausage. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, do me a favor and go ahead and get me a couple of uh, tray jacks set up. When cooking sausage, man, it all comes down to, you know, slow down in life, man. Cook it low and slow. You want that casing to just pick up a beautiful golden brown color, and you want it to snap. If you go, if you go too hot, too fast, man, it's gonna, you're going to split it. If you split that skin, they all just bust on themselves and just climb out, and you got to start over again. We're going to pour our currywurst out. This is, uh, you know, kind of like a German street food. Very heavy curry flavored sausage. All right, this is a curry ketchup made here in house. And you know, this is street food. It's supposed to be sloppy, you know what I mean? We do a fried chicken sausage, which is basically us making, you know, grinding, you know, chicken thighs as, as you would any other chicken sausage, seasoning it, but then rather than putting it in a casing, we actually wrap it in chicken skin and then deep fry the whole thing. It's a fun way to, uh, to play on, on, again, an old ancient classic. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Meat is my true love. Like the, the art of butchery, the art of charcuterie, the art of, the art of making sausage. This is my passion. And this is what I, what I truly love doing. Tell me you wouldn't love that coming out of your table. Come on now. At Franklin Barbecue, we've got a ton of meat scraps. And one really old school way to get rid of those is to make sausage. I've got my hog casings soaking in warm water, and I've got my meat scraps sitting in the freezer getting really, really cold. And every time you make sausage, you always wanna keep everything as cold as possible. If the fat starts getting warm, it gets sticky, it clogs up the grinder. So the bottom line is to keep everything ice cold. So in the meantime, I'm gonna make the seasoning. So I'm gonna start off with a pepper and kosher salt, garlic powder. onion powder, Hungarian paprika, and dry mustard. Alrighty. Kind of mix it up. That's just about perfect. Ah, brisket trimmings from the restaurant. So all sausage has to have a little bit of fat. If you don't have fat, it's just gonna be too lean, it's gonna be dry. So this sausage, I'm looking for 20% fat, 65% lean beef. I'm gonna cut real uniform little cubes. And then 15% pork. Just touch something. <clears throat> Alrighty, so the next step, I'm gonna dump all of our meat on the cutting board. So right now I'm just kind of looking at this stuff, I'm gonna mix it in by hand. I want the fat, the beef, and the pork to be evenly distributed throughout the pile. Then I'm gonna mix in the seasonings and just make sure it's really worked in there pretty good before I put it back in the freezer.
Adding a little water helps keep the mix moist. Really just kind of work and everything in. Make sure the salt and the pepper look even across it. Don't want it splotchy. You know, it's a real bummer when the fat and the meat get warm while making sausage. So keep everything ice cold, including the parts to the grinder. All right, so get the auger on. Put the tray on. Plunger. This is the sausage stuffing tube. So I'm gonna unscrew this. So you can get any size grinding plate you want. I prefer a 10 millimeter. You could go smaller, you could go bigger. Any way you like. So, sausage stuffing tube. Now for the casings. These are hog casings, 3032 is the size. So they've been soaking in warm water, so they're super pliable. Gonna wet the tube a little bit. At this point, you just kind of spend some time working it on there. So our meat's got the seasoning set on it. It's been in the freezer for a little bit, super duper chilled. So load up the tray, turn on the grinder. Got my hand here. I'm gonna keep the stuffer pretty close because I'm probably gonna need this thing. So I'm gonna hold my right hand right here, kind of to tension the casing a little bit. I'm gonna take my left hand, and I'm just gonna kind of hold it like that. You don't wanna tie this off first and get a pocket of air, so I'm gonna leave it open until later. But as I start feeding meat through the auger, I'm gonna hold it, and then as the casing fills, I'll kind of gradually control the speed of it with my hands. You know, it might be nice to have a helping hand sometimes when you're doing this. Oh, there it goes. So notice how fast it's coming out. Too fast, and then pinch it off. Give it a good twist. <laughs> Slide it off, twist it. You could tie rings, you could do links, you could do one continuous length if you want. If it gets a little lumpy, you might want to slow down the casing with your right hand. Get a good twist. If it stops or if it starts again, you get a little air pocket. You can kind of work it out with your hand as it's coming out. Alrighty, and that's it for that casing. Thank you, helping hand. Maybe check your twists. Twist them up by hand if you want, if you missed a couple of them. So I'll cut them into lengths of four. One, two, three, four. That way I can get them on the cooker a little bit easier. I can store them a little bit easier. That's just kind of how I like it. You can do anything you want. Doesn't matter. At this point, you want to put these in the refrigerator for 24 hours, let the casings dry out a little bit, let the flavors meld, and then it's time to smoke them. Here in Central Texas, you're bound to see a ton of different ways people cook sausage. A lot of places cook their sausage on racks. It's a great way to cook a lot of sausage all at once. But I prefer to cook sausage on a grate in an offset cooker. Keep it low and slow and make sure the casings don't pop. So now that our sausage has been in the fridge for a couple days drying out, it's time to cook it. And what better way to do that? Go to Jenny's Little Longhorn Saloon on a Sunday for chicken bingo. We've got a festive crowd of people out here and a lot of sausage. So I think it's time to get to cooking. Hope your wheels keep on rolling and your band stays on tight. Hope the wind is at your back and there ain't a bear in sight. Hope your load is on the money and you get some sleep tonight. Good luck, good drug in the night. So chicken bingo is a tradition here at Jenny's Little Longhorn Saloon. Every Sunday at 4, they put a grid of numbers up on a table, put a chicken on top of that, you get a number. If the chicken is on your number, you become a winner. Get a ticket. Be a winner. Chicken bingo is an Austin tradition, and Dale Watson is a country music institution. He's been playing Sundays at Jenny's for as long as I can remember. Be right back. Dale Watson, everybody, one time. Thank you. Sausage is sort of the ultimate party food. It's self-contained and it's pretty easy to cook.
That guy is big. Once you get that sausage all cooked up, throw it on a piece of white bread, and here in Texas, that qualifies as a full meal. You know, one thing, when people find out you've got barbecue, look out. While we're out here feeding the public, inside they're waiting for that chicken to pick a winner. <laughs> It's always a good idea to have a lot more than you think you need, because no matter how much you got, it's never enough and someone's always going to get disappointed. This was the last one. third winner of the day, and it is number, number two. Two is the winner. Number two is the winner. Number two is the winner. Number two is the winner. Who's number two? Two is the winner because the chicken did. Number two and the winner. 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 All right. What's your name, sir? James. James, I detect a little bit of accent there, James. Where are you from, James? Australia. Australia. So we're cleaning out a sausage, and the hen has made her mark. Adios. Adios. Yeah, y'all got a brick pit back there, right? But take a hint. Man, alive! That was nuts. Turns out people really like sausage and beer and country music. So how about we go inside and work off those links? Adios, Adios, All right. Hey, y'all ain't gotta go anywhere. Y'all can stick around and drink a little bit. So the meat's super chilled. Bro, so laid back, man. Now this sausage is pre-cooked. By right. May the sausage begin. Oh no! no. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, it just glittered.